after yesterday's Amtrak train crash outside Baltimore, Maryland. Another 175 people were injured in the high-speed collision between the passenger train and slower freight locomotives. Robert Shackney is standing by live at the crash scene. Bob, why has it taken so long to put together a death toll from the crash? It took a long time, Doug, because the wreck was so total. The force of the collision uh, uh, telescoped the first three cars, piling one car on top of the other, and all night long, rescue teams simply had to cut through steel to try to see who might still be buried underneath. In fact, now, just a few moments ago, rescue team members found another victim, another dead body, and uh, brought it out. It took long because it's that kind of disaster. Bob, what do we still have to learn from this crash? Investigators need to know just why the, four, the three freight locomotives ended up on the passenger track. The passenger train traveling at perhaps 100 miles an hour or more was supposed to have clear track, clear right of way for reasons yet unknown. The freight locomotives were switched over to that track and the fatal collision followed. The worst disaster in Amtrak history. Thank you, Bob Shackney. And they watch the death toll stands at 13 in the Maryland train wreck, but may climb as the crew's dining, uh, crushed dining car, rather, is examined by authorities. The president is... Five minutes, and, 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 and everything started sliding. The terror and anguish of a survivor after Amtrak's worst accident ever. This is Day Watch on CNN for Monday, January 5th. With Marianne Laughlin and Bob Kane in Atlanta and Gene Randall in Washington. Good morning, CNN correspondent Dave Monsies reports now that a 15th body has been pulled from the wreckage of the Amtrak passenger train north of Baltimore. The train called the Colonial was heading north yesterday, bound for New England at high speed when it collided with three Conrail freight locomotives on the same track. Amtrak says the locomotives, in their words, had no business being there. All 12 cars of the passenger train left the tracks. They piled one atop another, the victims trapped beneath tons of wreckage. At least 175 people were hurt, many seriously. Early today, a body was recovered from a dining car at the bottom of the pile. Now, we have reports two others have been recovered. The disaster shut down traffic in the busy Northeast Corridor. There is still no service this morning between Washington and Philadelphia. CNN correspondent Dave Monsies is at the scene of the Amtrak crash and has the latest on rescue efforts there. Dave, good morning. Yes, good morning, Gene. It's just been within the past five minutes or so that the, those additional victims were brought forth from the train. And what is difficult to be able to determine at this point is specifically from which coach car those, uh, the victims came because of the fact that uh, part of the dining car and another car still overlap. It's very difficult to be able to tell specifically from which car they came, but now the total does come to, a, uh, to 15 dead now that we know of. And in addition to that, in about another uh, two hours' time, we're told that the National Transportation Safety Board will be holding a meeting in a firehouse near to the crash location, and following that meeting with, uh, with area officials, the National Transportation Board and uh, Safety Board will be briefing the press, and therefore we will be briefing you. Dave, a while ago when the death toll was 13, the speculation was that all the victims had probably been found. Obviously now that speculation was invalid. What's the outlook for the possibility of more victims? The real linchpin in this particular situation, Gene, is that bottom car, that dining car. For much of the evening, there had been the hope expressed that they may in fact find no one in that car because of information given from a conductor who was on board the train, injured but did survive, who said he didn't believe he had seen anyone in that car. Now access is beginning to that lower car, and rescuers are beginning to find such articles as shoes and other materials inside the compressed car, which leads them to believe there may in fact be even more victims inside. It, of course, is a very busy northeast corridor which is affected by this terrible accident. What's the outlook for traffic resuming anytime soon? Uh, we have been hearing conflicting reports on that. One, possibly as early as mid-afternoon, that there may be some resumption. 
but that might possibly be uh, contingent upon how quickly one of the four sets of rails that go through this area may be cleared, and right now it looks like it may take substantially longer than that. All right, Dave, thanks very much. Dave Monsey is reporting live from the scene of the worst ever Amtrak crash, a collision, and the death toll now is 15. Marianne? It could be the worst accident in Amtrak's history. Rescue workers spent the night removing bodies from the three forward cars of the Amtrak Colonial. The cars piled up on top of each other. Officials rescued the injured before removing the bodies. We've had crews searching all the cars, and, and we do a primary search, and we do a secondary search. And right now, I think what we have here is, is the one car that we need to get into to determine the extent of injuries on those people in there. At the bottom of this pile is the Colonial's dining car. The problem for the thousands of rescue workers has been lifting the top two cars off the dining car below. They used a railroad crane on the tracks plus construction equipment. For those who survived, it was a horrifying experience. A minute before the crash, we, f we felt the train starting to rattle a little bit, and then about 10 seconds later, it started shaking violently. He went up front to find seats, and he wasn't gone five minutes, and, and, and it hit, and everything started sliding. All of a sudden, it was just a big crash. It looked like an atomic bomb going off. The Colonial was traveling at more than 100 miles an hour when it ran into the Conrail locomotives on the same track, that according to federal railway officials. A federal railway spokesman says the train was going so fast, the engineer probably had no time to react. Most of the hundreds of passengers got off safely, but more than 150 were sent to hospitals. These locomotives are equipped with event recorders, very much like the black boxes on commercial airliners. Investigators are already going over the data there in an effort to find out how and possibly why the two trains collided. John Holloman, CNN, near Chase, Maryland. Survivors of the derailment are telling stories of crawling over twisted metal and out of broken windows to safety. One woman says someone yelled, calm down, and everyone panicked. CNN's Dave Monsies has been at the scene all night talking with those who escaped. Like many of the more than 700 on the train, these victims were dazed but still survivors. Hundreds in the rear cars escaped serious injury, but did spend up to 12 hours waiting other transportation home. It just gave time to remember what had happened. I see, and I headed toward the front, and I decided when I got there, I didn't want to go through the cafe, and I turned around and went and went to the back bathroom in that sense. I just, you know, I just felt that, you know, I was just being guided, I guess. I kept thinking, well, I'll just get up, and it was like, the train's still moving, and it's still going back and forth, and that's when I thought, like, oh, it must be going to roll over or something. It, was, it went on for a while, and, and then uh, the only time I thought it was in a movie was when I got out of the train and I was standing on the road and I looked and the three cars in front of us were just like, when they have a train accident movie, they're just like on top of each other in the hole. Close to 2,000 emergency workers blanketed the site outside Baltimore. Red Cross workers kept records on each survivor at each shelter. We've had some missing people and we've forwarded that through and found a couple of them and some of them we haven't found yet, but uh, we're still searching. The area has been, uh, people on the train have been widely dispersed. Hospitals, local homes, different command centers and all. So it's been a very trying time. There were offers of thanks as well. A Czechoslovakian couple offered thanks and praise for those who helped. Oh, we were very lucky that we were in the third car. You see, usually we take the first one and it would have been fatal, I guess. Well, sorry for people who were in the first time. It was America at its best, really. You know, in that community, apparently nothing ever happened. And uh, something of this magnitude did not overwhelm them. They were so nice. The buses would take them all home, finally away from the worst train accident many had ever seen or heard of. Dave Monsies, CNN, Chase, Maryland safe on the wreckage of an Amtrak Conrail collision in Middle River, Maryland. That raised the death toll to 15. At least 175 were hurt. Rescue workers say they do not expect to find any more survivors. Together, when the train rammed three freight locomotives Sunday afternoon, searchers are using cranes to get to the cafe car on the bottom of the stack. They fear the discovery of scattered personal items there means more bodies remain to be found. The northbound Colonial was carrying about 500 people when it hit the Conrail engines head-on. 
Besides the 15 dead, 175 are known injured. The wreck has tied up traffic in Amtrak's busy northeast corridor. Dozens of trains were canceled yesterday. Today, there is still no service between Philadelphia and Washington. Runs between New York and Washington are subject to delays. Trains between New York and Philadelphia are said to be on schedule. Incident in the history of Amtrak. The search goes on this morning outside Baltimore for victims who might still be trapped in the wreckage of Amtrak's northbound Colonial. Safety investigators say they hope to learn the cause of the crash from data recorders recovered from both the Amtrak locomotive and the Conrail engines it hit at 100 miles an hour. Survivors reported hearing an explosion. Now we were very lucky that we were in the third car. You see, we usually we take the first one and it would have been fatal, I guess. Long delays elsewhere in Amtrak's busy northeast corridor. This Amtrak passenger train and three Conrail diesel locomotives collided, killing at least 15 people and injuring scores more. And the Reagan administration releases its, its proposed budget for 1988, a spending plan that tops the $1 trillion mark for the first time in history. Good afternoon. I'm Bernard Shaw, and this is Newsday. In our top story at this hour, President Reagan is recuperating this afternoon from what... Rescuers recovered three more bodies today, and they're still searching through the wreckage for more possible victims. In addition, 175 people were injured yesterday when the Amtrak train, traveling at 105 miles an hour, rear-ended three Conrail locomotives. An Amtrak spokesman says the locomotives had no business on the same track with the passenger train, and investigators will look into whether the signal malfunctioned or whether the locomotive ran a red light. Amtrak's engineer was killed in the crash, but both Conrail crewmen survived, and officials say they'll be interviewed and given drug tests as part of the investigation. The National Transportation and Safety Board is investigating the crash, and uh, a scheduled news conference has just ended in Chase, Maryland. CNN's Bob Franken is live there on the phone now, and uh, Bob, have we learned anything from the uh, press conference? Well, not an awful lot, but that is because the National Transportation Safety Board uh, member, Joseph Kral, says that they haven't really learned a lot yet. What they know is, is that about 1.30 p.m. yesterday, the uh, Colonial train heading north from Baltimore, close to 100 miles per hour, was about 20 minutes away from Baltimore when it uh, ran into apparently the rear of the uh, Conrail engine that had gotten onto the wrong track. What was described to us is that, that at that juncture there are four tracks and that uh, the Conrail engine had slipped over to the Amtrak track as it was going north. Again, as I said, the key message out of the news conference from uh, Mr. Nall was they don't know if the Conrail crossed over on its own, if there was a human error, if the switch that would have been made in Philadelphia was in fact made, if there was human error, as I said, or if there was an equipment malfunction. Some of the devices that they will use to try and find this out include recording devices. Both uh, trains carry devices that will give them certain, certain data. As a matter of fact, on the train, what we call on an airplane, the little black box, which you know is actually orange, is called on the train a pulse event recorder. They've recovered the one from the Conrail train so far. They're still looking for the one from the Amtrak train. The uh, Conrail train crew, as you mentioned, is still alive. They will be questioning them and testing for drugs. Believe it or not, this could have been worse. About 100 yards up the track is a bridge over the Gunpowder River, which is a tributary of the Chesapeake Bay. Had the collision occurred there, of course, the trains could have very easily fallen into the water, making this nightmare situation even more. Among the people who is here today is Senator Frank Lautenberg, who is of New Jersey, and he's chairman of the Transportation Subcommittee of the Appropriations Committee in the U.S. Senate. He put it as well as anybody when he said, the question is raised is this, was this an accident that was waiting to happen? There'll be a long investigation before people find out what the cause is. Whatever the cause is, it's going to be hard to provide an adequate explanation for the nightmare that you find here. Bob Franken, CNN Live, Chase Maryland. Uh, Bob, just before you go, we know that 15 people have been killed so far. Does that mean there are more bodies to be recovered? We understand that the dining car is still, uh, uh, all of the people that were in the dining car have not been uh, taken out yet. Is that uh, the case? Well, one official says he is hopeful that all the fatalities have been recovered, but they're going to search at least for several more hours, and it is entirely possible, of course, that they will find more. So, like so many of the questions here, that one has to be an I don't know. Any idea when 